What are your dreams for a better world? My dream is to create a world where people of all ages can manage anxiety and thrive. And I approach this dream with certainty because over two decades of research and practice as a high performance and mindset coach to CEOs and business leaders, as an adult, child and adolescent clinical psychologist, and as the founder of the Anxiety Clinic, I have created a methodology that's helping all ages, and it's called the Mind Strength Method. So where did my passion to help people of all ages to manage anxiety and thrive stem from? It's embedded in the depths of who I am. I was born into anxiety. My story is the story of a 19-year-old sweet-natured girl named Elsa who lived in a small village in Slovakia in the heart of Europe. Elsa had a sister who had a beautiful baby girl named Veronica, who Elsa adored. One day, however, the soldiers came and took Elsa away from her beloved family in a cattle train to a place named Auschwitz. She was alone and scared. Elsa soon learned that Auschwitz was a place from which people never returned. Auschwitz was a death camp. Elsa was sorted into the line of people who were given jobs and the remaining people were sent to the gas chambers to die. Elsa's job was to sort through the belongings of the people who were sent to the gas chambers. It was there that Elsa came across this photo. This is a photo of Veronica. This is, in fact, a photo of my beloved mother. Elsa couldn't believe her eyes at the horrific implication of finding this photo. She picked up the photo and she smuggled it in her sparse clothes at the risk of being discovered and killed. As soon as she could, she hid this photo in the cracks beneath her bunk bed. And she would look at this photo whenever she could. It was this photo that reminded Elsa of her values of family and love. It was this photo that reminded Elsa of her purpose to be reunited with her family. And it was this photo that gave Elsa the strength and courage to survive. This is resilience. Resilience is not about bad things not happening. Life is filled with adversity and struggle, right? Resilience is your capacity to choose how you respond in any particular situation to stand up to the struggle and realign to the things that matter most. As Viktor Frankl says, between stimulus and response, there is a space. And in that space is your power to choose your response. And in your response lies your growth and your freedom. And this is core to the mind strength method. The mind strength method is built out of the best scientifically supported strategies from clinical psychology, positive psychology, neuroscience, and building a high performance mindset to help every single person to flourish and thrive. It's four logical, simple steps based on neuroscience and our primitive predictable drivers as human beings to move from anxiety, stress, low mood and burnout into resilient and empowered action from anxiety to action. You see, anxiety is the problem of our times. And leveraging the mind strength methodology, we can help every single person. Because in my experience, I have found that human behavior is in fact predictable. And when we can understand neuroscience, when we can understand our primitive predictable drivers as human beings, we can create anxiety prevention programs that positively impact billions of lives. But in order to create a world where every person can manage anxiety and thrive, we need to drive systemic change. We need to leverage our education system 
and embed anxiety prevention programs into every single school to equip young people with the tools to thrive and build resilience from the ground up. And this is my dream. You see, anxiety is the problem of our times. In a recent survey of principles across our nation, anxiety was identified as the most prevalent mental health challenge impacting our young people. The research demonstrates that one in every four human beings, that's one in every four of each of you, experience anxiety to clinical levels and anxiety disorder. That's anxiety to a level of severity that causes prolonged fear, suffering and avoidance in a person's life. And that's not to mention the anxiety that we all experience, right? Just as part of being human, just as part of, of living our life in this ever-changing, uncertain world. School principals, teachers and parents feel under-resourced and underprepared to help our kids and teens with anxiety. And compounding the problem, we have a shortfall of skilled mental health professionals. At the Anxiety Clinic, we are flourishing in our capacity to help adults, kids and teens to manage anxiety and thrive. But the demand is skyrocketing. So we need to embed anxiety prevention programs across organisations and schools to equip people with the tools to prevent problems before they take hold. And it absolutely can be done. And I'm often asked the question, why is anxiety so prevalent? Is it that it's getting worse or is it that in fact we're more aware of anxiety? And the answer to this question is helped by understanding what anxiety is. Anxiety is our inherent struggle with uncertainty. You, by the very nature of being human, are wired to want to be able to predict your environment in order to prepare and protect. And that's a good thing, right? Let's imagine the cave person in each and every one of you, and you were to leave your cave and you can't see around the corner, a predator might be lurking there ready to pounce and eat you alive. Certainty, predictability and control keep you safe. But let's think about the world that we live in. No longer do we live in the linear world of a bygone era. We live in a world of unparalleled uncertainty. We have the uncertainty that's brought about by social media. We have eco-uncertainty and climate change. We have the uncertainty brought about by the pandemic. We have escalating geopolitical instability and we have the rise of new artificial intelligence technology. And now we have data hacking and the impact that it has on the certainty of our most private information. We were designed to roam in fields and pick berries off trees, yet oftentimes the closest we get to green are the tree line screen savers on our desktops. And when we struggle with uncertainty, this mental process called worry takes hold. Worry is our attempt to get certainty when there is no certainty. The what ifs, what ifs, what ifs, feeding our brain with stories such as, what if I'm never good enough compared to all of those amazing people on Instagram? What if the floods never end? What if, I'm, what if something bad happens to my family? What if I'm judged negatively? What if I make a mistake? What if I fail? And the way our brain is wired is our brain responds to perceived threat or a worry story as if it's real threat. And we get hijacked by this part of our brain called the amygdala that sets up our body to fight the threat or run away from it or get certainty and control. We have a surge of adrenaline and cortisol through our bloodstream. And these are the many faces of anxiety, often unrecognised or unknown. You see, anxiety is just a word, but 
it brings with it many emotional and behavioural consequences that impact detrimentally in our organisational life, in our professional life, in our academic life, in our personal life. Fight behaviours such as anger, aggression, agitation or flight behaviours such as avoidance, procrastination and withdrawal. And let's think about some of the lesser recognised flight behaviours, self-harm in an unhelpful intent to quieten the emotional pain and the most insidious representation of flight behaviours. That's right, suicide. It's a horrific statistic to recognise that the World Health Organisation identifies self-harm as one of the leading causes of death of 15 to 24 year olds. And then there's the third cluster of behaviours, our need for certainty and control. Things like perfectionism, checking and rechecking or reassurance seeking. So have a think about how do these many faces of anxiety impact you? What are the worry stories that are playing out in your mind? And let's think about the many faces of anxiety within our kids and teens. Let's take 13-year-old Zach, for example. Zach comes home from school. He's agitated. He storms into his room and he slams the door. And his mum comes in, Zach, what's wrong? And Zach says, get the hell out, leave me alone. Or maybe there's four-year-old Lucas. Lucas is like a hamster on a treadmill. Go, 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 go. He's impulsive, reactive, high energy. At night, Lucas has bad dreams and wants to sleep in his mum and dad's bed. And he cries when his parents drop him off at preschool. Or maybe there's eight-year-old Izzy. Izzy sitting in her classroom staring out her window. And her teachers and parents say, Isabel, why can't you just concentrate? Or maybe there's 11-year-old Will. Will's a high achiever and he thinks he has to be perfect in order to be good enough. He checks and rechecks his work, but sometimes it's just like this big procrastination block that he just can't get through. And finally, there's 15-year-old Maddie. Maddie has stomach aches again and she's missing school. She fears that her friends are bitching about her and she's increasingly withdrawing from social situations. She's heard that maybe if she just cuts her arms, she can quieten the emotional pain. So, what is common across Zach, Will, Lucas, Maddie and Izzy? Kind kids, caring kids, wanting everything to be safe and well, wishing that they could just quieten their unrelenting, overthinking mind, but just not knowing how. So for people who experience anxiety, I like to say you care because you care. It is the protective instinct in overdrive. And core to my mind strength mission is to create a step change in the way people conceptualise anxiety. We want to drive a global narrative that smashes anxiety, stigma and shame and helps people who experience anxiety to feel deeply proud of who they are. This is the mind strength method. The mind strength method is all about leveraging the often superpower values of people who experience anxiety. It's about moving out of the push away from fear and realigning to values-driven and empowered actions instead. So, as you can see, anxiety is a fundamental human experience and common to us all. It's not weak to feel, it's human to feel. But anxiety does come with it, emotional and behavioural consequences that can rupture relationships and detrimentally impact an adult, child or adolescent's capacity to perform and engage academically, professionally and personally. This is why we must consider anxiety to be a human problem, not a problem of only a few to be pocketed into a medicalised model. This is why anxiety must be dealt with with a universal approach 
to be able to leverage the education system and to build resilience from the ground up. The positive impact on subsequent adult life is enormous. So, in fact, I want you to all feel hopeful, empowered and positive because we have the tools to prevent and manage anxiety. We have the tools to build resilience from the ground up. We can't wave a magic wand and make uncertainty disappear. We need to learn how to make friends with uncertainty. Survival of the fittest, right? We need to adapt and flourish amidst uncertainty. Imagine a world where we can equip all people with the tools to thrive in our contemporary world. Imagine a world where we can leverage the education system and equip our young people with the tools to build resilience from the ground up. And this is my dream.